Hi. So for a lot of students who have been practicing some basic skills from my classes, um, we're going to simply warm up our hands. What we're going to do, we're going to freely make abstract paintings by practicing some um, different brush marks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with very light color. So I'm going to mix some orange color to start with. But then I'm going to wash my brush and then water some parts. And I'm going to mix some orange color to that. And I'm going to add some crimson and red color. Put some water in there. Make some strong purple color that is mixed with crimson. Mix more purple color. Now I'm going to add some cobalt blue. Now I'm going to see some parts that are more smaller brush strokes. Then I'm going to add a little more cobalt blue in there to connect the color. I'm going to press the brush marks so you see how I'm making some different approach in the painting. And then I'm going to add more water to make the gradation of that. And I'm glazing over the red color. Then I'm going to make some colors with cerulean blue. Still having that red on the red part. Water some parts. And I'm going to Put magenta color different directions adding a little more red color into that then I'm going to practice some leaf shape that I haven't dubbed for a while. So what I'm doing is that I am pressing the brush and then take it off. Mix all the colors together. I am start with the tip of the brush, pressing the brush and then take off. This is a very basic practice we do with the basic skills. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring some yellow color, mix into that color. Doing some glazing over here. them all together. Add more burnt sienna color. Connect. Scumpling. Mix water.
let that dry over there. I forgot to do the taping today. I apologize, but you know you always have to tape. I'm going to do it after like I'm waiting for it to dry. Um, let me see. This part is not dried yet. Let me do some emergency taping so that it stays not so warp. Do you see? Even though the paper itself is super thick, it still warp if you don't tape it down. I'm going to make some light green color into the color that I just used. See some dirt color. Water it out and bring some yellow into that color. You can simply choose different colors. It doesn't have to be the same color I'm using right now. And then I'm going to use that cobalt blue into this little brown color I used. And then do some wet on wet. Water it, water it. Um, one thing I wanted to show you guys to light up, lighten up the color. When it's still wet over here, you can use some um, paper towel or like toilet paper. If you press and then take it off, you can lighten up the color. What you can do, you can reactivate some parts with water. And you can also do the same thing. Then it gets lighter. And then I'm going to mix some red violet color. And do another leaf shape. And also doing the glazing. I am going to use some cold green color. It's almost blue. I'm going, to, I'm going to make some frilly brush marks that I haven't done in the painting. I'm still leaving some highlights in the painting where we do a lot with uh, more specific object paintings and also it gives a little bit of aliveness for the painting then i'm going to mix some magenta pink color and mix some pink color into the dull color Mix that with the blue color, I mean green color that you had. Make some little detail, small detail. What you can do, I use my pinky finger to press and then have that as a stand to hold my hand still. I mix some brown color. I'm going to practice some branch over here. So you're practicing some singular line as well. You're, only, you're not only making big brush mark or small you're practicing some different movements in the painting. I'm going to use 
use some red color mix into that and make some more branch that is a little thicker smaller brush marks smaller brush marks practice so we're not so in just the traditional form we're practicing some different way of painting with watercolor so you can bring some more creativeness to your painting not only mimicking what you're seeing so you're thinking about the edge as well you're not leaving the edge out like that mixing that green into here some darker color practicing some value in some part so it's not so much with one tone of the color you have to practice some parts really dark so that you can bring that into your painting to contrast the good light in your work okay Alrighty, so I know it was a little faster for you guys, but try to practice this on your own pace. It's okay if you ruin this at all, like it's fine. It's all practice for your brush marks and all that. So keep going with the time that is given from the class and try to show some different moves in the painting. Um, okay. All right, so hope to see you guys working on some amazing paintings. All right, thank you. Hi guys, um, welcome to G's art classes. Today we're going to learn how to make last mistakes revisiting the basic skills to um, warm up the hands, okay? So today we're going to do um, very basic value scale uh, practice. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to mix some red colors to start with a very, very light tone. And just simply add a little more colors to the tone. to make differences between the tone, right? Um, it's a little too strong, so I'm gonna mix a little more water. It is important to make differences between the tone more, sig more significantly. So work on that a little more because I see that you guys are v using very simple tone when you make the paintings of um, the lecture from the lectures that I uh, release.
So this is about seven. I think that's good numbers. I'm going to try something even more saturated part with more intensive color, which doesn't really make a difference between these colors. So um, I'm going to lighten up a little bit of this color. Still different colors than this one, but it's between these two. So um, you're going to practice this with three different colors today. Um, and then I'm going to show you guys how to make some different um, circle things that can reduce uh, different um, mistakes that you guys often do. So let's say um, about water controlling, a lot of people ask me questions about. We do wet on wet. Often you guys make mistakes, either you make a pull of the water or like too much water or too like too much less water. So let's say I'm wetting the paper, but as you see, there's a lot of water. If you keep adding the water and then let's say you're trying to put the colors in there. It won't really sit because you're just basically adding more water with the colors on top of what you have. So then often what you guys make a mistake is that even putting less water in it. So it's hard to make the brush marks or adding the color on top of it. You see? So then how you see that you're putting right amount of water for the wet on wet. Um, I'm going to dab the brush onto the paper, clean paper, or paper towels, or a cloth, and then you put some water in there. It's not a pool of water. You can tell because you see like a little glare on top when you see the parts of the, you know, paper. That's where you could put wet on wet really properly. Mix a little bit of green to make some darker parts. There. 